So in less than two months, South Africa is expected to have a new Chief Justice. This is Mokhoeng Mokhoeng's 12-year term comes to an end by October. The President now has to nominate his successor, who is then interviewed by the Judicial Services Commission before appointment. At the moment, it would seem Mokhoeng's deputy, Justice Raymond Zondo, who is currently acting in the judiciary's top job, is a shoe-in. Zondo has been in the position since uh, uh, July after Mohueng's long leave started in May. To speak to us about this and other issues, including issues of diversity in the judiciary and the legal professions in the country, we are joined now via Zoom by researcher and advocacy officer at the uh, organization Judges Matter. Zikwana Ndlebe joins me now for that conversation. Zikwana, thank you. So knowing our president and how long he takes to process issues and uh, he's been described as someone who is a process man, uh, this deadline is looming for him to make up his mind about whom he's going to nominate uh, to replace uh, Mokhoeng Mokhoeng as the chief justice in the country. Do you believe the process should have started uh, at the moment? Do you believe uh, he should really by now have started the process and named his preferred nominee for this position? Hi, yes, um, the term of the current Chief Justice will be coming to an end in October, and it's less than 50 days currently, and we would have hoped that the President would have started the process already. But in terms of the Constitution, the process of the appointment of the next Chief Justice is solely in the hands of the President. The President will name the next Chief Justice, and then the JSC, in terms of the Constitution, will have to interview that candidate. But what we've been saying is that the President should adopt a different process, which is similar to the appointment of the NDPP that he adopted uh, previously. And that process is that the President, instead of choosing one person or one candidate to become the next Chief Justice, he appoints a, a panel of people who will nominate at least three candidates that will, will potentially become the next Chief Justice. And then those candidates will be interviewed by the JSC. Once those candidates are interviewed, then the President will go back to Parliament and, if, and pick a person that he thinks is, um, will, be, will, will make a good Chief Justice. Um, so what we are hoping the president will do is open up the process instead of only him having the say as to who the next chief justice will be. But we are hoping that that will be done as soon as possible because it's less than 50 days that are remaining for the current chief justice to be out of office. I see. Zikona, why is that preferable for the president to create a small pool uh, of judges from that small pool then be able to have all three, um, the number that you are, you are suggesting, being interviewed by the JSC and only then indicating which one of the three uh, will be his preferred candidate? What difference would that introduce? So if, you, if the president chooses a chief justice all by himself, then they, we've seen that there's been a lot of controversy in terms of the judiciary, the independence of the judiciary. There's been a lot of complaints from the general public, from, law, from lawyers. But now if the president opens up the process, that will enhance the integrity of the judiciary. That will also enhance the integrity of the office of the chief justice and the role that the chief justice will play, because it will not have been only one person, which is the president, who chose the chief justice, but the process will have been opened up so that um, everyone is aware of who the or has a say as to who the next chief justice will be. So it won't only be in the hands of the president um, who the next chief justice is, but um, there will be an option as to who the next chief justice will be instead of only the president choosing uh, one, only one person. Yeah, to be clear, this is not a process that's currently required by the Constitution. It's your appeal as judges matters. Right, so let me ask you then, uh, last year you penned an opinion piece um, about the need to have a, our first woman Chief Justice. Uh, with all the events that have transpired in the last few months and the, um, uh, the, the uh, Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng taking early leave and all the controversies that arose towards the end of his tenure and uh, Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo now acting in that position, uh, the exit of Justice Sisikham Pepe who acted as Chief Justice for a while. Uh, do you still maintain that position? 
position that uh, the next Chief Justice should be a woman? What we are saying is that it's time for us to think about having a, a woman as a chief justice. But obviously, we are not saying it's a must that the next chief justice be a woman, but it's something that we need to think about because we've never had a woman chief justice. We need to diversify the judiciary. And currently, we've got uh, the president of the Supreme Court of Appeal, who is a woman. And the question is, are we not ready as a country, as the South African judiciary, to have a woman chief justice? And in our opinion, we are ready. But obviously, that will be provided that the, that woman chief justice um, will be able to fit into the role of a chief justice in terms of uh, leading the JSC, leading the judiciary, um, and the administrative role that comes with being a chief justice. So it has to be a competent person who will be able to um, play the role of the chief justice adequately in terms of the constitution and in terms of the expectations of our judiciary as a whole. Yeah. Lastly, Zikona, let me ask you about the latest developments around uh, Judge uh, Lop uh, in the Western Cape Division. Uh, the recommendation there that came from the uh, JSC following that uh, judicial conduct tribunal finding uh, of improper conduct on his part, and now the process moves to Parliament. Uh, given the scheme of you know checks and balances between the various arms of state and the crucial role that lawmakers have to play in this process, what would you say uh, what should be the approach for political parties who are political by nature and take uh, considerations of mm. politics but also need to balance with what the finding is of the JSC? Well, um, we think that the process now is quite forward, it's straightforward, it's simple, because all that has to be done is for the National Assembly to look at the decision of the tribunal, to look at the decision of the minority JSC, um, and to look at the decision of the majority JSC, which um, opted for the adoption of the JCT's decision, which states that Shope, Judge, Judge President Shope is guilty of gross misconduct and should under undergo the impeachment process. So the, the National Assembly has the, these three documents in front of in front of them. So they only, only have to look at those documents and make um, a decision based on those documents, vote in favor or against the impeachment of Judge President Shope. And some have said that there, there needs to be rules that are put in place um, in order for the National Assembly to vote. We are saying that they, it's not necessary to have any rules in place because the Constitution already made provision for the JSC to conduct um, an investigation. Mm. So the, the only thing that needs to be done is, is to vote based on what the JSC and the JCT has decided already. Yeah, and, and, and that's a crucial point that you make. Thank you for that, Zikona. And I think what the point you're making there uh, differentiates it from the situation with Chapter 9 institutions. Zikona, they're saying that that preliminary process, in as far as judges are concerned, before it comes before Parliament for a vote on impeachment, already exists in the form of the Judicial Co uh, Conduct Committee uh, of the JS. SC and the JSC itself uh, having adopted that report. So let's watch and see what happens in the coming weeks and months.